Well, I only do press office on the tours. Uh, really, I'm Brian Epstein's uh, assistant, but I do press office on the tours because they haven't got a regular man. During your experiences, uh, you know, we read so much about the Beatles here in America and what they've done and their highlights of their career. What would you say uh, would be the most unusual experience so far? Um, I think the most unusual experience, it depends what you mean by unusual, but the most extraordinary experience they ever had was in Adelaide in South Australia when they found a half a million people, all ages and all classes, lining the highway for seven miles from the airport into the city centre to find this sort of thing 13,000 miles from home. And if you can imagine half a million people, it was a, it was a most, it was almost, is the word traumatic? And I think the secondly and more important to them when they returned to Liverpool, which is a doer and uh, a very, it's a city which sits back and takes stock of things, to see 150,000 people there welcoming them back as almost like de Gaulle re-entering Paris. One thing I wanted to ask you, uh, what, when you see the American crowds, the American crowds and their reaction, is there any basic difference between the uh, young men and women of America and their feelings toward the Beatles and the, uh, the British? No, it, they always look very much healthier than anywhere else in the world. The, the Americans? Oh, yes, and they always seem to be much older than they are, but they vary very little. They're extremely benevolent and generous, as fans are. And um, this reception yesterday was, was, without being pompous, well up to standard. Uh, during uh, your tenure with the Beatles, uh, has there been any incident or uh, instance uh, where I noticed I read recently about, you, you mentioned in a National Magazine article about uh, uh, crippled people uh, asking for their help. Uh, has this been widespread, or have you received many letters on this? Uh, there is a... We do get the impression that there is a belief that being near a beetle or being touched by a beetle, this is a minority, uh, is going to do them good in some way. Either they're going to feel, feel better within themselves, or they are actually going to be able to walk if they can't walk. Do the beetles answer all their fan mail? Fan mail? No, they don't. They couldn't possibly. They read a great deal of it. They particularly read it on tour or when they're on planes. They're interested in it because um, their view is that people are interested enough to write, then they should read as much as they possibly can. But they can't read it all because there are tens of thousands a week. I know you see all these uh, gifts here and this giant postcard and the big beetle out there. What, uh, what do they do with these things? Do they keep them? Uh, the things that are uh, not perishable, the big teddy bears and these, a lot of them they do keep. But what they don't keep, they give to children's homes and that sort of thing. But if they had, if they kept it all, they'd need a warehouse. Is there any apprehension on the part of the Beatles about this uh, uh, grinding uh, schedule for the upcoming tour? No, they just shrug their shoulders as they do about practically everything else in life. They li live life with a great big shrug, which keeps them fairly normal. Derek Taylor, thank you very much. Thank you, Larry.